Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. Back again with some more Knights of the Old Republic 2. In today's video we will be covering all robes and Jedi armor in the game. The robes and Jedi armor are of course restricted to just Jedi. The Jedi armor mentioned is also the armor you are looking for if you prefer armor over robes as they do not restrict your force powers like the other armors do. Also just a heads up we won't be covering the light, medium, or heavy armor sets. I will be covering those in another video so be sure to get subscribed to see when those come out. As always I've included timestamps if you just want to skip ahead to what you're looking for. Alright so here is how I'm going to break these down for you. I have made a few different tiers that we will go over for the robes. Tiers will be based on the level at which the robes start spawning. So first tier are far more likely to randomly generate for you and offer basic protection and modifiers. As we progress through the tiers, required spawn level will increase as well as the stats for the robes. Alright, so here's the tiers that I have. I have the common tier, the mid tier, the rare tier, the ultra rare tier or the high level tier, your cheat restored content mod tier. These robes in the cheat and restored content mod tier are only available through cheats or restored content mod. That's why they're in there. And then the last tier is the Jedi armor. So common tier will be level zero through 10 in when we can spawn it. Mid tier around level 20, rare tier around 30, and then your ultra rare tiers are gonna be level 40s. And I think the only thing that's level 50 is Darth Malak's armor. The beginning tier robes will be very easy to come across, but the higher tier robes will have to come from the luck of random generation. And of course, we will cover what stats the robes offer and which ones are my favorites, and we might go over which ones complement each class the best. So first off, let's briefly explain some mechanics of the game. Random item generation. So I found this quoted by a deleted hero over on Reddit. I'm not sure how accurate this is, but it's definitely very close to how it works in the game. I'll link it down below. So the loot tables were changed in the Sith Lords Restored Content Mod 1.8. Previously, when deciding what level item you would get, the game would look at your character's level and then select an item equal to your character's level, minus 2 or plus 5. Then add 5 if it was a rare drop. Example, at level 18, item drops would be between level 16 and 23 for a normal drop, and between 21 and 28 for a rare drop. Because you have a level sitting, the game may consider you to be a level 19, so you'll get an item between level 17 and 24 for a normal drop, and 22 and 29 for a rare drop. The way a rare drop works is that every time you open a container, the game will calculate a random number between 0 and 94. It will then add a modifier to this number. The modifier being three times the number of non-rare drops you've had since the last rare drop. When this random number plus your modifier is greater than 100, you get a rare drop and the counter resets. The reason you couldn't get robes above level 15 in-game normally was because the item level for items you were awarded was modified based on the type of item. For robes, it would divide the item level you were rewarded with by 2, hence the maximum level 15, 30 divided by 2, for a normal drop, and 18, 35 divided by 2 for a rare drop. I should add all items above 30 are assigned a random number between 24 and 30. That part is probably fairly accurate, if not completely accurate. The item generation will work very similar to something like that. So, and then right here, here's a speculation part that he points out on the bottom. I would guess that they removed the bit where the item level for the robe drops was divided by two, because this would result in all robes becoming available. And I believe this to be true because I used the Sith Lord's Restored Content mod, and I was at level 15, and I did the Fassa Freighter quest, which I'll talk about in a second, and I got a rare item. I think I got the Ozus Keeper robes. And I was at level 15, which shouldn't start spawning until levels 40. So it's pretty evident here they altered the loot table for the robes in the restored content mod. So before we dive into the ways that we can get the robes, let's first go over all the robes that are in the game. So obviously the best robes are going to be the higher leveled ones. Alright, so let's hop over to the wiki and see what these robes are all about. So of course I have this linked down below so you can check it out. And when I talk about what levels they start spawning at, so like right here on this one, the FASFA 4 and 5, that's the levels that'll start popping up during drops. So starting off in the common tier, we got the Padawan robe. It's kind of bland. It only gives you a defense bonus of plus one. Then you can see that this robe is also fairly easy to come across and it's quite cheap. Next up we have the dark Padawan robe. This one is pretty much the same exact thing as the Padawan robe, just a dark one, nice and black, which I prefer. I'll do a light side playthrough and rock a dark master robe the whole time. This one also offers a defense bonus of plus one and is fairly easy to come across. Starts spawning at levels four and five. Then next we have the Baron Du Novice robe. 
This one gives us a defense bonus of 1, and then damage immunity of 10% versus dark side or light side. So whichever one you are, it'll give you 10% immunity versus the opposite. And then it gives you wisdom of plus 1. This one starts spawning right here around level 6 and 7. Next up is the Matakai Apprentice Robe. This one doesn't give us any defense bonus, but it does give us constitution plus 1, dexterity plus 1, and strength plus 1. So this one is a good one to have if you're just looking to boost stats instead of get defense. And this one starts spawning around levels 8 and 9. Then next up we have the Jedi Robe. This one offers a defense bonus of 1 and regenerate force points 1. That one starts spawning around level 14 and 15. Then we have the Dark Jedi version of it, just the Dark Jedi Robe. Still gives us a defense bonus of 1 and regenerate force points of 1. And this one starts spawning around level 16 or 17. Then we have the Norris Robe. This one has a defense bonus of 2 and then damage immunity of 20% versus energy. This one pops in around level 18 and 19. That'll cap out the common tier. You should easily be able to find all these robes throughout the game just because you've already leveled quite a bit just by finishing Paragus and Telos. So now we'll move into the mid tier, the gray Jedi robe, which this one looks pretty cool. This one has a defense bonus of one and charisma of plus two and also regenerate force points one. The gray Jedi robe starts spawning around level 22 or 23. So this one's a good one to have if you're going light side, but you like using force storm because it's gonna give you that nice boost of charisma. So it's gonna cost a little less force points. And then once we hit this mid tier, we can start putting underlays into our robes. So we can see that right here, this one can be upgraded with an environmental underlay or a bio-restorative underlay. Maximum of plus three constitution and three regeneration. So it's pretty cool that you can add those. Next up in the mid tier is the Jedi Knight robe. This one gives you a defense bonus of two and then regenerate force points of one. The Jedi Knight robes can also be upgraded with some underlays, and it starts spawning around 24-25. Then we have the opposite version of it, the Dark Jedi Knight robe. Defense bonus of 2, regenerate force points 1, and then this one can also be stacked with the overlays. Then we have the Matakai Adept robes. This one gives you a defense bonus of 1, constitution plus 2, dexterity plus 2, strength plus 2. So it's the next one up from that one that we saw in the common tier. And it looks like this one cannot be stacked with overlays. Now we're going to move into the rare tier. These ones are going to be harder to spawn and come across. You'll still come across some of these pretty easily, especially as you go through. These start spawning as rare drops, you know, at level 32, 33. The Jedi Master Robe has a defense bonus of 3 and regenerate force points 1. Then we have the opposite, the Dark Jedi Master Robe. Defense bonus of 3, regenerate force points 1. This one can also take the underlay. So see, once we start getting up to these Jedi Knight and the Jedi Master Robes, so when it has like, this is the only place that you can get it, Fossil Level 28, that just means that we're only going to be able to get it through drops. Whereas like up here, you can see that these Dark Jedi Robes, there's a few different places in the game that you can get them. But when we start getting down to these Jedi Masters, when they're just like this, this is the only place we can get them, is just through random drop. The Dark Jedi Master Robe will always spawn after we defeat Darth Sion. But it's also possible to get through the random generation. Then we have the Baron du Sage robe. This one gives us a defense bonus of 2, and then damage immunity of 20% versus dark side or light side, whichever one is opposite, and then wisdom of plus 4. Then we have the Ozus Keeper robe, and I put this one in the rare tier. I think it should be in the ultra rare tier because it says it takes level 40 to get, but we'll always get one of these in the museum treasure on Onderon when we're raiding the royal palace. So I just put it at the end of the rare tier because we can always get one. This one has a defense bonus of 1, charisma plus 2, intelligence plus 4, and wisdom plus 4. This one is probably going to be your go-to if you're just looking to increase stats because we can for sure get this one. Next up, we have the ultra rare tier or the high level tier. Starting off with the Nath Cowling Robe. This one gives us a defense bonus of 3. It's restricted to only dark side users and it gives us strength plus 3. It can also take some of these underlays and spawns around level 42, 43. So this one's probably a good one if you're going for a Jedi Guardian because it gives you that plus strength. Next up is the Arca Jeth's Robe. With a defense bonus of 2, restricted to just the light side, wisdom plus 2, and regenerate force points 3. This one can take underlays and start spawning around level 44 or 45. So this one's probably a really good one to have if you're going light side and you're a counselor because that regenerate force points is 3. You know, all the other ones only have 1. That one will be a real good one for a counselor. The next up we have Alima Kito's robes. These ones are restricted to the dark side as well, with a defense bonus of 3, strength plus 2, Wisdom plus 4, and Regenerate Force Points 1. Takes the Underlays and starts spawning around level 46, 47. Last up in the Ultra Rare High Level tier is Silvara's Robes, with a Defense Bonus of 2, with a Damage Resistance of 15 versus Dark Side Energy, Restricted to Light Side, and then Dexterity plus 2. 
This one starts spawning around level 48, 49. So now we're into the cheat restored content mod tier. So you can see right here it says these robes may only be acquired by using the give item cheat. However, they can be randomly generated in the restored content mod. I do have the restored content mod, so when I first started recording the Fast Freighters quest, I did get one of these restored content mod robes that aren't in the standard vanilla game. So the first one is Jolie's robe, with a defense bonus of 3, restricted to neutral, charisma plus 4, regenerate force points 1. If you're going Grey Jedi, this one's probably really good, but you have to stay in that Grey Jedi, otherwise, I don't know. I wonder if you are a Grey Jedi, and then you go too far light side if it tells you that you have to take the robes off. Huh. Maybe I'll have to test that out. Next up is Thawne's robes, with a defense bonus of 3, restricted to light side, and then these ones have bonus feats of Force Focus, Force Immunity, Stun, and Force Jump. Oh, so that's super cool. So I'm assuming that you could be a Jedi Counselor, throw on Thawne's robes, and then now you have Force Jump, which is usually only restricted to the Guardian class. And it looks like all these can take underlays as well. The next up, we have Kratos' robes, with a defense bonus of 2, restricted to dark side, Strength plus 6, and Constitution minus 2. So this is actually the first one that I've seen that has a negative impact if you wear it. Then we have Nami's robe, which is a defense bonus of 3, restricted to light side, Wisdom plus 4, and Regenerate Force points 3. So these ones that are that can only be given by cheats or for the restored content mod, I, you know, they're all really good, but depending on how you put that in, that could be you cheating, or if you have the restored content mod and you randomly come across it, I guess that's pretty cool because it's just something you might have not gotten before. So then another one that I added in here is Revan's Robes, because you can download a mod to give yourself Revan's Robes. So we can see here Revan's Robes offer a defense bonus of 5, Dexterity plus 8, Strength plus 4, and Regeneration 1. So now we'll hit our last tier, the Jedi Armor. So now we're doing the Jedi Armor, which does not restrict your Force powers. So these ones are Jedi friendly if you still want to use your Force powers. So I apologize for slaughtering these names. So we have the, the Zaysan Shah Initiate Armor, with the Defense bonus of 4, Max Dexterity bonus plus 4, and then Saves of Fortitude plus 1. So all of these will require Armor Proficiency Light. And this one starts spawning around level 10 or 11, so you can get this one fairly early on in the game. Then we have the Jal Shay Neophyte Armor, with a defense bonus of 3, max dexterity bonus of plus 4, skills persuade plus 1, and charisma plus 1. And it starts spawning around level 12 or 13, so this one still might be fairly common. Then we got the Jal Shay Advisor Armor, with a defense bonus of 3, max dexterity plus 4, skills persuade plus 1, charisma plus 2, and wisdom plus 1. So all of these can take some underlays. And this one starts spawning around level 20, so you might come across this one. Then we have the Zaysan Shah Warrior Armor, with a defense bonus of 5, max dexterity bonus plus 4, and saves fortitude plus 1. So this one you're probably going to see a lot less of because you have to get to level 30 for it to start randomly generating in the vanilla game. Then we have the Jal Shay Mentor Armor, with a defense bonus of 4, max dexterity bonus plus 4, skills persuade plus 1, charisma plus 4, and then wisdom plus 1. Looks like it can take overlays and it doesn't start spawning to levels 38 and 39. Then last up, we have Darth Malak's armor. I didn't even know this existed in the game, just because it's so hard to come across. Gives us a defense bonus of 7, max dexterity bonus plus 4, restricted to dark side, strength plus 1, and regeneration 2. So this is the only armor that has regeneration. And, I mean, it starts spawning at level 50, the level cap, which is super hard to acquire. So I'd have to say that, yeah, this is probably OP, best armor for sure, right here. Just super hard to get. So we're going to look over a few of these and talk about which ones you might want, but it's going to kind of all be dependent on what kind of playstyle you're doing. Whether you're trying to boost skills, or you're the hard hitter lightsaber person, or if you're focusing on force powers. So in the common tier, I mean, the best ones are probably going to be the ones towards the end, these the Jedi robe and the Dark Jedi robe, because you get a defense bonus of one, and then the regenerate force points. Plus, I've always loved the look of the Jedi robes, so I will sacrifice the defense bonus for looking like a badass Jedi. But that's just me personally. So then as we hop into the mid-tier, we talked about the gray Jedi robe. That one's going to be really good for someone who's going counselor and then trying to use opposite alignment force powers because it's going to give you that nice charisma boost and it'll probably spawn fairly early on in the game, at least compared to the rare tier and the ultra rare tier. To have to say the best one is probably this uh, Mataki attempt robe. And I think this one would be good for a sentinel or a guardian because whether you're using strength or dexterity for your main damage, this one gives you a boost of both. 
So if you like to switch to blasters too, that one might be good. Then in the rare tier, I'm gonna have to say that the Jedi Master robes are pretty sweet just cause they, they kinda look poofier than the other ones. So you just look like a badass Jedi Master. But they also give you the defense bonus of three, which is one of the highest defense bonuses you can get from the robes. But the best one in the rare tier is probably the Ozus Keeper. Because it gives you some defense bonus, but then charisma plus two, intelligence plus four, and wisdom plus four. That, and we can get it in Onderon in the museum treasure. So you could potentially make Onderon your first stop. You'd have to do Duxon first, but you could get this super early on in the game. Then we have our high tier robes, which I rarely saw playing. I might have seen one or two, but I didn't really notice how many different ones there were till I started making this video. So the best ones here are probably going to depend on whether you do light side or dark side. It looks like the best dark side one is this Alima Kitas, just because you get the three defense bonus, two strength, four wisdom, and the one regenerate force points. Not too many good ones for the light side. I think there's only this one for light side, actually. Defense bonus two, wisdom two, regenerate force points three. So then the best ones out of the cheat tier or the restored content mod tier. Oh man, they're all pretty good. This Jolie's robe is good because it's got the plus four charisma. So that one's going to be good for a counselor. This Thon's robe, it's really the only one that adds bonus feats. And not only that, it adds quite a few of them. So this one is probably going to be my top pick out of the cheats and restored content mod tier because of just the stuff that it gives you. I don't think I'd recommend the Kratos robes just because it's the only one that has a penalty. And why take a penalty when all the other robes don't even offer one? The Nomi's robes will be really good too just because you got that defense bonus 3, wisdom 4, and the regenerate force points 3. So anyone going counselor is probably really going to enjoy this because it'll up your force points. I think most of the ones that buff your, your force regeneration and add charisma or wisdom those are going to be really good for a Jedi Counselor. It's going to complement you using force powers and regenerating force points faster so you can keep using them in battle. Then we got the armor. I think if you go Sentinel or Guardian, you're going to want to get some Jedi armor. Unless you want the robes for the look. But the Jedi armor is going to give you the better armor boost. Plus it still gives you a whole bunch of other perks. And when you're a Guardian, you're usually focused on damage output. So you're going to be out there dealing damage instead of in the back casting force powers. And then when you're a Sentinel, most people take advantage of the sneak so if you can't kill them in one hit then it might be nice to have the jedi armor so that way you have some protection against their retaliation attack and it'll still let you cast your force powers i mean best one hands down is going to be darth malak's armor defense bonus of seven that's insane dexterity plus four strength plus one regeneration two so your best bet's probably just going to be to spawn this in so you can play with it and enjoy it because by the time you get to level 50, you know, what are you going to have left to do in the game? Unless you did some crazy ass grinding before you finished a bunch of planets. I just don't think you're going to get a lot out of getting Darth Malak's armor. Unless you cheat it to yourself. That's it. There they all are. We kind of just went over them and I told you a little bit about the stats. It's kind of hard to suggest which one's better for which class because it all depends on your playstyle. I would suggest kind of what I said earlier that counselors should stick to robes that boost force regeneration and charisma or stuff that affects force powers. And then and sentinels and guardians they're probably going to get more out of robes that add to strength or to other skills that would complement your build or just get the armor because it's going to give you that better boost and still offer you some sweet modifiers so we can get these robes either legitly in the game or through cheats and modifiers let's go over obtaining all these robes legitly without cheats and modifiers the fast for freighter quest that i mentioned earlier is the best rare item reward quest to use for this and our current character level will determine what robes we can currently get most players can end the game at around level 30 if they have everything in the game. Level 50 is pretty much impossible to obtain without cheats and XP glitches. The Sith Lord's Restored Content Mod removed all the XP glitches, so the only way to get to level 50 with the Restored Content Mod is by hacking yourself enough experience to be level 50, or I think mining mines might actually work in getting you some XP. Those of you playing console or playing the OG version without the Sith Lord's Restored Content Mod can still use the XP glitches to obtain level 50. A very time consuming way to get XP is using mines. So get close to a place where you can go into another section of the level. And then we're going to want to set 15 mines down. 15 is the most that you can put down at one time. So set 15 mines down and then go into the next area and set another 15 down. And then come back to the first area, collect the 15 that you put down, put another 15 down, and then go back to the second area, pick up those 15, put another 15 down, and you just rinse and repeat. It's probably the most legit way to farm experience as enemies do not respawn. So let me explain this FASFA Freighter quest real quick for you. FASFA is the toy dairy in Dockmaster. 
In the vanilla or Xbox version of the game, Fasfa is a Twi'lek instead of a Toydarian. He is located in the center of the docks. The quest for him, called Fastest Freighters, is one of the few quests that guarantees a rare item upon completion. There are more rare item quests throughout the game, but this one is best because we can save it for super late in our playthrough when we can come back at level 30, 40, or even 50. Make sure you save this quest for later on. It is possible to complete this quest by accident when trying to get the Athorian dude out of the flop house. There are three ways to help Lasavu without completing the Phosphor Freighter's quest. Option one is to just straight up murder him, nice and simple. Option two is to get him to trade Fasa a power cell for his freedom to leave. And then option three is to pay Fasa 600 credits so we can clear the Athorian's deck. Either of these three options will get you the power cell for the speeder repair, and it'll also get the Athorian taken care of while leaving Fasa's Freighter's quest for later. So to do this quest, just approach Fasfa and look to ask him how business is these days. Then proceed to ask how you can help in preventing the hijackings. We will be looking to get him to mention a problem with the pylons. If you have already chatted about the hijacking, you may get the pylon problem dialogue right off the bat. Either way, this is what we are looking to trigger. Get through the speech and offer to help. He will explain how to solve the quest, but I'll just give you the answers right quick. So use this terminal next to Fosfa to power up one of the pylons if you haven't already. Then head to the now powered pylon and use the computer to assign the freighter IDs. The answer is the first choice, then the last choice, then the middle choice, in that order. You should receive some XP after doing it if you've done it correctly. Now head back to Fasa and save your game before talking to him. Very important to save your game here before chatting with him. It's highly unlikely you'll get some sweet ass robes on your first try. Possible, but unlikely. Simply chat with him to finish the quest and get your rare item reward. If you don't get the robes that you're looking for, reload the save and try again. Rinse and repeat this until you have what you want. I tried this when I was at level 19, and it took me three tries until I got a pretty sick set of robes. And then when I was level 15, I had to do it about seven times before it gave me a super rare set of robes. So that is how we can legitly come across the robes without using cheats or hacks. However, if you're going to go with the option of hacking yourself to level 50, you might as well save yourself some time and grind by simply hacking the robes into your inventory. I'll share with you three different methods of how to do this. The first method is simply enabling cheats in your file. I'll make sure to link the uh, forum that shows you how to do this in case my directions aren't very good. But you basically just go to your game's directory, either in the C drive, under the game, or if you have it under Steam, under Steam. And you're going to want to look for the swcoder2.ini file. I'll link this forum that I'm reading in the description so you guys can check it out yourself. But you just want to go and find your game file, then find the directory, and then look for the swcoder2.ini file. And then we're going to look for the game options and then add enable cheats equals one, just like it's pictured right here. So then when we're in game, we just press the squiggle key, the one that's right above tab, and we type in the codes for what we want to use. In this forum that I link, over on the right, these give item codes, and it's alphabetical, but like, so if we wanted Alima Kita's robes, we would just smack that squiggly line and then type in give item space A underscore robe underscore 24. And then boom, that would be instantly added to our inventory. So I'll be sure to link this down below so you guys can look through it if you want to find out which item you want to gift yourself. So for example, to add Malik's armor into your game, you just smack that squiggly key and then enter give item space A underscore robe underscore 24. And boom, you now have Malik's armor in your inventory. Method two is a mod called the TSL Hackpad, or the Sith Lord's Hackpad. You simply add this mod into your mod folder, and then you use the Hackpad to add robes of your choice into your inventory. And I'm pretty sure you can just add whatever you want. So that one is a nice and simple way if you are comfortable with adding mods. The last method is using the Coder Save Editor. I've spoke about this mod before, but it's a very handy tool to change most things in your save file. So you could use it to add whatever robes you wanted, or you could use it to change yourself to level 50. There's a bunch of stuff you can do with it. And that's it, my friends. That should cover all the robes in Knights of the Old Republic 2 and how you can acquire them. I honestly never came across a few of these robes until I did this video. And some of them are really good too. I just don't always like how they look. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Be sure to get subscribed if you're not already. I'll hopefully get a jump on the other armor set video here soon. Toss a like up on the video if it helped you guys out. As always, feel free to comment with any questions or hit me up in the Discord and I'll do my best to help out and answer. Appreciate you all checking out this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.